In today's video, we embark on an enlightening journey to explore the transformative path of spiritual growth and self-discovery. This exploration is not just a superficial glance at the concept of awakening, but a deep dive into the multidimensional aspects of our existence and the evolution of human consciousness. Guided by the insightful perspectives of Dolores Cannon, a renowned figure in metaphysical research, we'll uncover the layers and complexities that define our spiritual journey. Cannon's work sheds light on the multidimensionality of our existence, suggesting that our reality extends far beyond what we perceive with our physical senses. She invites us to explore a universe rich in dimensional depth, where each level reveals profound truths about ourselves and the cosmos. As we navigate through the 12 stages of spiritual awakening, we open ourselves to new realms of knowledge, wisdom, and connectivity. Let's begin this journey together, unlocking the secrets of our existence and embracing the path to higher consciousness. Stage one, discontent. In our journey through spiritual awakening, the first stage we encounter is the intense sense of discontent. This is not merely a fleeting dissatisfaction with our material accomplishments or worldly achievements, but a deeper, more persistent yearning for something beyond the tangible. It's a universal experience, one that transcends cultures, backgrounds and lifestyles. Dolores Cannon, in her exploration of the soul's journey, sheds light on this phenomenon. She teaches that our souls are inherently oriented towards growth and evolution. This discontent we often feel can be understood as the soul's nudge, pushing us to look beyond material satisfaction and comfort. It's a call to delve deeper into our spiritual path, to seek out the true essence of our being which lies beyond the physical realm. Consider the stories of Siddhartha Gautama and Eckhart Tolle, both of whom embarked on profound spiritual journeys spurred by intense feelings of discontent. Siddhartha, born into royalty, Surrounded by luxury and opulence, found himself deeply unsatisfied with the ephemeral nature of material wealth and pleasure. His journey was not just a personal quest, but a soul's pursuit of deeper understanding and enlightenment, an integral chapter in its evolutionary story. Eckhart Tolle, similarly, experienced a transformation rooted in discontent. His journey from despair to inner awakening mirrors the soul's quest for growth, his story is a testament to the soul's resilience and its relentless pursuit of enlightenment, transcending the limitations of the human experience. In the words of the 13th century poet Rumi, the wound is the place where the light enters you. This statement echoes Cannon's concept of challenges as opportunities for inner growth. The wound of discontent, therefore, is not just a source of pain, but a gateway to spiritual awakening, an opening for the light of wisdom and understanding to enter our lives. As we navigate this stage, it is essential to recognize that our feelings of discontent are not merely obstacles to be overcome, but vital signposts, guiding us towards a greater understanding of our true purpose and the deeper aspects of our existence. They are the catalysts that set us on the path to awakening, urging us to explore the vastness of our potential and to embrace the lessons our souls are here to learn. Stage two, questioning and seeking. As we progress on our spiritual path, discontent gives way to a phase of questioning and seeking. This stage is characterized by an introspective quest where we find ourselves grappling with fundamental questions about life's purpose and our true essence. It's a period marked by a deep thirst for knowledge and a quest for truth that goes beyond the superficial layers of existence. Dolores Cannon's teachings provide invaluable insights into this phase. She emphasizes that the soul is inherently on a quest for knowledge and truth. According to Cannon, each soul embarks on a journey through various lifetimes, constantly seeking to expand its understanding and to gather wisdom. This phase of questioning and seeking in our lives can be seen as a manifestation of the soul's deep-rooted desire to awaken and learn. Cannon also talks about the awakening of dormant knowledge within us. Throughout our lives, we accumulate a wealth of experiences and lessons. Much of this knowledge remains latent within us, 
waiting to be unlocked. This phase of our journey is crucial, as it is when we start to tap into this reservoir of hidden wisdom. The questions we ask ourselves during this time act as keys to unlocking the deeper knowledge that resides within, leading to profound insights about our existence and the universe. The Dalai Lama's quote, The goal is not to be better than the other man, but your previous self perfectly encapsulates the essence of this stage. The journey is not about external comparisons or competing with others. It's about personal growth and evolution. It's about the soul advancing from its past experiences, learning from them and evolving into a higher state of consciousness. In this stage, the focus shifts from external validation to internal exploration and growth. It's a transformative period where we begin to understand ourselves and the world around us in a more deep and meaningful way. We start to see the patterns of our lives, the lessons we have learned and the wisdom we have gained, which propels us towards a deeper, more fulfilling path of self-awakening. This is where we truly begin to embrace the journey of the soul, acknowledging and valuing our unique experiences and the intrinsic quest for knowledge and truth. Stage three, enlightenment, the awakening. The journey of spiritual awakening leads us to the pivotal stage of enlightenment. This stage is not just a moment, but an expansive process where consciousness broadens, allowing us to perceive and understand realities beyond the ordinary. Enlightenment in this context is the expansion of our awareness, an opening to the vastness of universal knowledge and wisdom. Cannon's insights shed a unique light on this process. According to her teachings, enlightenment is about accessing higher levels of knowledge that exist in the universe. She speaks of the Akashic Records, a cosmic library of universal wisdom where every thought, word and action is stored. This stage of our journey involves tapping into these vast reserves of knowledge, gaining insights that are not bound by our physical senses or conventional learning. The metaphor of light gradually illuminating a room beautifully illustrates this process. Imagine being in a dark room where, slowly, light begins to seep in. At first, only vague shapes are visible, but as more light pours in, details start to become clear. This is akin to the gradual unveiling of cosmic truths in our journey towards enlightenment. As our consciousness expands, we begin to see and understand more about the nature of reality, our place in the universe, and the intricate web of existence that connects everything. Buddha's saying, three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth, resonates deeply with this stage of spiritual awakening. In alignment with Canon's teachings, it underscores the inevitable revelation of universal truths. Just as the sun and the moon cannot be forever obscured by clouds, the fundamental truths of our existence and the universe eventually come to light in our consciousness. Enlightenment, therefore, is not merely an end goal, but a continuous process of growing, learning and expanding our understanding. It is about gradually lifting the veils of illusion that cloud our perception, allowing us to see with clarity and wisdom. In this stage, we start to perceive the interconnectedness of all things and the universal laws that govern our existence. Stage four, resistance and inner turmoil. In our odyssey of spiritual awakening, we inevitably encounter a phase of resistance and inner turmoil. This stage is characterized by confronting our deepest fears, uncertainties and internal conflicts. It's a challenging yet crucial part of the journey where we come face to face with our own shadows and the unresolved issues that hold us back. Cannon also emphasizes the significance of past life traumas and karmic lessons that often manifest as fears and resistances in our current life. According to Cannon's teachings, Many of the challenges we face have their roots in unresolved issues from past incarnations. Our soul carries these memories, and the resistance we experience is an opportunity to address and heal them. This process is essential for our soul's evolution and for freeing ourselves from repetitive patterns that no longer serve our growth. 
The metaphor of a seed struggling to emerge from the soil powerfully illustrates this concept. Just as a seed must push through the earth, facing resistance to grow and bloom, we too must confront and overcome our challenges to evolve spiritually. This resistance, though often perceived negatively, is in fact a catalyst for growth and strength. Cannon's perspective illuminates this struggle as an integral part of our soul's journey, encouraging us to embrace our trials as opportunities for deep transformation and growth. Rumi's quote, The wound is the place where the light enters you, beautifully aligns with the belief in the transformative power of life's trials. In this phase, our wounds, both from this life and past lives, are not mere sources of pain but portals for growth and enlightenment. They are the openings through which wisdom, understanding and light enter our being. These experiences, as challenging as they may be, are invaluable in shaping us into more enlightened, compassionate and resilient beings. In this stage of resistance and inner turmoil, we are called to delve deep into our soul's history, to confront and heal the wounds of our past and to emerge stronger and more enlightened. Stage 5 – Abyss – Decision Point At a critical juncture in our spiritual voyage, we arrive at what can be described as the abyss, a metaphorical chasm that represents a pivotal decision point in our lives. It is here that we stand at the crossroads of our soul's path, confronting the vast unknown that lies ahead. Dolores Cannon's teachings provide a deeper understanding of this pivotal stage. She speaks of crucial choice points in our lives where our souls are confronted with significant decisions that shape our journey. These moments are not random, they are integral parts of our soul's plan, offering opportunities for growth and advancement. The abyss symbolises these significant turning points where we choose between clinging to the familiar or bravely stepping into the unknown. Embracing the unknown is a central theme in Canon's work, which often explores the soul's path through various dimensions and realities. According to her, our souls are far more expansive and adventurous than we can comprehend in our current physical existence. The decision to leap into the abyss is essentially a decision to explore new aspects of our existence, to learn lessons in different realms, and to embrace the full spectrum of experiences that our souls crave. Joseph Campbell's quote, It is by going down into the abyss that we recover the treasures of life, resonates deeply with Cannon's perspective. The abyss, with all its uncertainty and potential for fear, is also a place where great treasures of spiritual knowledge and personal growth can be found. It's in these depths that we often encounter our true strength, resilience and wisdom. The challenges we face in the abyss are not merely obstacles, they are catalysts for meaningful transformation and enlightenment. Stage 6. Rebirth and Authenticity As we traverse deeper into our spiritual journey, we reach a phase of rebirth and authenticity. This transformative stage involves confronting and integrating our shadow self, the hidden, often unacknowledged parts of our psyche. It's a process of shedding old skins and emerging anew, more aligned with our true essence. Dolores Cannon's teachings shed light on the significance of this stage. She emphasises the importance of acknowledging and healing past life experiences that often contribute to the shadow self. According to Cannon, our past life traumas, unresolved issues and suppressed emotions do not just disappear. They carry over into our current lives, forming the shadow aspects of our psyche. Rebirth involves confronting these shadows, understanding their origins, and healing them. It's a process that allows us to integrate all parts of our being, both light and dark, leading to a more authentic and whole self. Carl Jung's concept of enlightenment aligns perfectly with this idea. He believed that enlightenment is not achieved by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. It's about bringing to light those aspects of ourselves that we have denied or ignored. This process of confronting and understanding our shadows is essential for personal growth and spiritual enlightenment. It allows us to move beyond the illusions and limitations we've set for ourselves 
and embrace a more authentic way of being. Shakespeare's timeless admonition, this above all to thine own self be true, is particularly relevant in this phase of our passage. Authenticity involves being true to ourselves, acknowledging and accepting our strengths and weaknesses, our light and shadow. It's about living in alignment with our innermost values and truths rather than conforming to external expectations or societal norms. This stage of rebirth and authenticity is transformative. It's a rebirthing process in which we let go of old identities, beliefs and patterns that no longer serve us. As we embrace our authentic selves, we open up to a more genuine, fulfilling and enlightened way of living. Stage 7 Oneness and Connection In the transformative odyssey of spiritual awakening, we eventually reach a profound understanding of oneness and connection. This stage marks a significant shift in perception. From seeing ourselves as separate entities to recognising our interconnectedness with all that exists. Dolores Cannon's teachings offer deep insights into this concept. She often spoke about the interconnected web of life, emphasising that everything in the universe is connected. According to Cannon, the sense of separateness we often feel is an illusion, a product of our limited physical senses and societal conditioning. She encourages us to look beyond these illusions to understand the fundamental interconnectedness of all beings and things. This transition to a sense of oneness aligns with Cannon's insights into the collective consciousness. She suggests that at a higher level of awareness, we are all part of a unified collective consciousness. In this state, the individual self merges with the larger whole, and we begin to experience life not just through our personal perspective, but as a part of a grand, interconnected tapestry of existence. This realisation leads to a deep sense of unity with all beings, fostering empathy, compassion and a sense of belonging. Pierre Chardin's quote, We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience, beautifully encapsulates this stage of spiritual awakening. This perspective suggests that our true nature is far more expansive and interconnected than our physical existence might imply. Our human experience is just one aspect of our broader, more resonant spiritual existence. Stage 8. Flowing with life and synchronicities. As we delve deeper into our spiritual awakening, we enter a phase where we become more attuned to the subtle nuances of life, a stage characterised by the recognition of synchronicities and intuitive guidance. This is where we begin to notice the meaningful coincidences and signs that seem to guide us on our path. Dolores Cannon's teachings provide a unique perspective on this phenomenon. She viewed synchronicities not as mere coincidences, but as messages from the universe, guiding us along our soul's journey. According to Cannon, these synchronistic events are signposts, indicating that we are in alignment with our higher purpose and the universe's plan. They serve as affirmations that we are on the right path and that the universe is conspiring to help us fulfil our spiritual mission. The concept of flowing with life's rhythms is also central to this stage. It involves a deep trust in the universe's wisdom and timing. Instead of resisting life's natural flow, we learn to move with it gracefully. This means trusting our intuition, the subtle internal compass that guides our decisions and actions. Cannon emphasised the importance of intuition as a direct line to our higher self and the universe's wisdom. It's about listening to those inner nudges and following them, even when they might not make logical sense at the moment. Trusting the universe's wisdom is pivotal in this phase. It's an understanding that the universe is a friendly, supportive force working in our favour. This trust allows us to let go of the need to control every aspect of our lives and instead be open to the experiences and lessons that come our way. It's about embracing the unknown and recognising that sometimes the most profound growth and learning come from the unexpected and unplanned. Stage 9. Authentic Expression In the journey towards spiritual awakening, a critical phase is that of authentic expression. 
This is where we fully embrace and express our true selves, aligning our external life with our innermost thoughts, feelings and beliefs. Living authentically is a key aspect of our spiritual evolution and personal growth. Dolores Cannon's teachings offer insights into the concept of authentic living. She emphasized that each soul comes into life with a unique purpose and a set of lessons to learn. Every incarnation is an opportunity for the soul to express its true nature and fulfill its purpose. Authentic expression, therefore, is about aligning with this inner purpose and living in a way that reflects our soul's true intentions. Cannon also discussed the concept of soul contracts and pre-life planning. According to her, before we are born, we make agreements with other souls to meet and interact in certain ways for mutual growth and learning. Authentic expression involves honoring these soul contracts by living and relating in a way that is true to our soul's purpose. It's about forming genuine relationships that reflect our true selves and help us fulfill our part in these soul agreements. The value of genuine relationships in our lives cannot be overstated. Authentic expression in relationships means showing up as our true selves without masks or pretenses and allowing others to do the same. This authenticity fosters deeper, more meaningful connections with others as relationships become vehicles for mutual growth and spiritual evolution. Purposeful living is another crucial aspect of authentic expression. It involves making choices and taking actions that are in line with our highest values and aspirations. It's about living deliberately, making conscious choices that reflect who we truly are and what we genuinely want to experience in life. Stage 10. Elevation of Consciousness As we progress further on our spiritual journey, we encounter the significant phase of elevating our consciousness. This stage is marked by a profound shift in our awareness, where we begin to access higher dimensions and states of being, transcending the limitations of our physical existence. Dolores Cannon's work offers invaluable insights into this elevation of consciousness, she speaks about the potential of human consciousness to reach states far beyond our ordinary experiences. According to Canon, as we evolve spiritually, we gain the ability to access higher dimensions, realms of existence that offer greater understanding and a broader perspective of the universe and our place within it. This elevation of consciousness is not just about acquiring new knowledge, it's about experiencing life in a more deep and interconnected way. Central to this phase is the concept of the Higher Self, a theme prevalent in Canon's teachings. The Higher Self is understood as the part of our soul that remains in the spirit world, constantly guiding and supporting us. This aspect of our being holds the wisdom and knowledge of all our past experiences and life lessons. As we elevate our consciousness, we strengthen our connection with our Higher Self, gaining access to this reservoir of wisdom. This connection provides us with guidance, intuition and a deeper understanding of our life's purpose. Canon also emphasises the interconnectedness of our thoughts, feelings and the cosmos. In this elevated state of consciousness, we begin to understand that our thoughts and emotions are not isolated phenomena. They are energy that interacts with the energy of the universe. This realization brings a sense of responsibility for the energy we put out into the world and an understanding of how deeply we are connected to the cosmic web of life. The elevation of consciousness is thus a transformative process. It involves expanding our awareness beyond the physical and the mundane, connecting deeply with our higher self and realizing our integral role in the universe. As we elevate our consciousness, we begin to live with a deeper sense of purpose, harmony and connection, both with ourselves and the world around us. Stage 11. Co-creation with the universe. In the transformative odyssey of spiritual awakening, we arrive at insightful realisation of our role as co-creators with the universe. This stage is about understanding and embracing our ability to manifest our reality a concept deeply explored in Dolores Cannon's teachings, Cannon emphasizes that we are not passive observers in the universe, rather we actively participate in creating our reality. 
This co-creation aligns with our soul's purpose and the lessons we are here to learn. According to her insights, our life experiences are not random occurrences but reflections of our inner state and the energies we project into the world. This perspective empowers us to take charge of our lives, understanding that we have a significant hand in shaping our journey. The power of thoughts and beliefs is central to this concept of co-creation. Cannon taught that our mind is incredibly powerful and has the ability to influence and shape our reality. What we believe and think consistently has a large impact on what we attract and manifest in our lives. This aligns with the teachings of the Law of Attraction, which suggests that like attracts like. By focusing our thoughts and energies on what we desire, we set the process of manifestation in motion. Albert Einstein's famous quote, Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics, beautifully correlates with Cannon's understanding of the universe. Cannon and Einstein both recognize that, at its core, the universe is energy and consciousness. By aligning our energy, our thoughts, emotions and beliefs, with the frequencies of our desired outcomes, we co-create our experiences and reality. Stage 12. Unconditional love, compassion and acceptance. As we ascend to the pinnacle of our spiritual quest, we embrace the profound virtues of unconditional love, compassion and acceptance. These qualities represent the highest vibrations of our existence and are key to achieving spiritual growth and enlightenment. Dolores Cannon's teachings emphasize the significance of unconditional love and compassion as the cornerstone of spiritual evolution. She believed that these qualities are among the most powerful vibrations in the universe, possessing the ability to transform not only individual lives, but also the collective consciousness. According to Canon, unconditional love is the purest form of energy, transcending physical boundaries and ego-driven desires. It is a selfless love that asks for nothing in return, reflecting the true essence of our spiritual nature. The role of compassion in our spiritual journey is equally significant. Canon taught that compassion is an empathetic understanding of the struggles and pain of others, leading to a deep desire to alleviate suffering. This quality fosters a sense of interconnectedness with others, reminding us that we are all part of the same universal fabric. By practicing compassion, we not only assist others in their healing process, but also accelerate our own spiritual growth, learning valuable lessons about empathy, kindness, and the human condition. Acceptance is another transformative quality highlighted in Canon's work. She emphasized the importance of accepting ourselves and others just as we are, without judgment or the desire to change. This acceptance is a recognition of the perfection in imperfection and the uniqueness of each individual's path. It is an acknowledgement that every experience, no matter how challenging, is a valuable part of our soul's evolution. The transformational impact of unconditional love, compassion and acceptance is profound, these qualities have the power to heal, not just at an individual level, but collectively. They can dissolve barriers, heal old wounds, and foster a sense of unity and oneness. Cannon's insights suggest that by embodying these qualities, we contribute to the healing and evolution of the entire planet, raising the vibration of the collective consciousness. As we conclude our journey, we find ourselves enriched and transformed by the profound insights and lessons we've explored. This journey is not just about personal growth. It's a collective voyage towards a higher consciousness, a shared endeavor to elevate not only ourselves, but the world around us. Let's carry forward the essence of what we've learned, that every step on this path is an opportunity for awakening, every challenge a chance for growth, and every moment an invitation to live more authentically and soulfully.